On average, the world produces 430 million metric tons of plastic every year. The United States alone produces tens of millions of tons of plastic waste annually. Yet on average in the United States, only about 5 to 6 percent of plastic is recycled. Ali Rogan digs into a new report covering the plastic industry's tactics to push recycling and avoid regulation. A new report by the Center for Climate Integrity, an environmentalist group, says newly uncovered statements from oil and plastics executives underscore the industry's decades-long secret skepticism about the viability and efficacy of recycling. The authors of the report reviewed old investigations and new documents, including previously unknown assertions from industry executives. In 1994, one Exxon chemical executive put the industry's support for plastics recycling in blunt terms, saying, quote, we are committed to the activities, but not committed to the results. Another representative from DuPont noted in 1992 that recycling goals were set knowing full well, quote, they were unlikely to meet them. Michael Copley is a correspondent covering climate issues for NPR. Michael, thank you so much for joining us. Some of these quotes that are in this report are very blunt. They might be shocking to some, but you've been covering these issues for a long time. Were you surprised by anything that's in this new report? Yeah, I think what's in the report echoes a lot of what we've been seeing um, from, from previous investigations, and that is that the plastics industry pushed recycling as a solution, even though industry officials have known for a long time that it wasn't going to be viable at scale or that they had serious doubts about its ability to be viable at scale. What we've seen is that they really looked at recycling as a way to kind of fend off regulation and to keep selling more plastic. And so we've known about that. I think it's always striking when you see a report like this that unearths uh, new statements, new quotes, and to see the way in which they really seem to view recycling as sort of, you know, a, a public relations tool as opposed to an environmental tool that they sort of presented publicly. Many of the most eyebrow-raising quotes from this report are 10, 20, even 30 years old. If they're so old, why should we be paying attention to them today? So right now, what the industry is saying is the focus on these comments doesn't accurately reflect where the industry is today. And so what it's asking for is sort of the public to trust it, that it's working on this new technology that is going to solve the problem of plastic waste now. And I think that the historical record sort of undercuts public trust in the industry and raises questions about those assertions now. I think the other reason why this matters is it could potentially be legally problematic for the industry. And by that, I mean the oil and gas industry right now is facing dozens of lawsuits from states and localities based in part on statements it made about climate change and fossil fuel uh, going back decades. We know that the state of California has opened an investigation into the role of oil and gas companies in the petrochemical industry in kind of the creation of the plastic waste crisis that we're facing. And the group that put out the report, the Center for Climate Integrity, was upfront saying that, that it was compiling this to serve as kind of the, the, the fact basis or the, the basis of evidence uh, for potential legal action. I want to read a response we got from a plastics trade group called America's Plastic Makers. Their president accused this report and the authors of it of citing, quote, outdated, decades-old technologies and says it's mischaracterizing the current state of the industry, as you were just talking about. This group also says that plastic makers are looking to have all plastic packaging be, quote, reused, recycled, and recovered by 2040. So you just mentioned this, but where does plastics recycling technology stand right now? How advanced is that technology? So the industry has presented advanced recycling, chemical recycling as um, as a real solution. There is deep skepticism of it, and not just from sort of environmentalists you'll, who you'll talk to, but uh, um, you right, know, and, I, and I should analysts. note, and I should note here, Michael, that advanced recycling is actually a term of art that is used among the plastics industry to describe the current state of this recycling. Yeah, that, that, that's right. And so as opposed to sort of traditional mechanical recycling, what they're doing now is turning plastics sort of back into liquids and gases to sort of reuse. The skepticism comes from questions about, has anything about the economics of recycling changed? If in the past it was cheaper to make new plastic, why is that not still the case, especially in, uh, when you see low oil and gas prices? And the other piece of it is plastic degrades over time. And so what scientists say is that there are just limits to how many times you can reuse plastics. So there is deep skepticism. What does your reporting say about this claim that all plastics will be recyclable by the year 2040? Obviously, the industry has put out this promise. I think that, that its critics will say we have been hearing these promises or promises like it for decades now, and that there's nothing in the record to think that now is any different. 
Is there a solution here that climate activists and environmental experts agree on that, that actually includes recycling? Or is there a consensus among that side of the issue that stakeholders need to be looking at solutions beyond recycling, that recycling is not the be-all, end-all to avert the climate crisis that experts will point to and say we're in? There is a recognition that plastic is so ingrained in modern life and it plays important roles in medical devices and other things that it's almost impossible to envision a world where we move completely beyond plastic. I think what people are talking about is reducing plastic production to a level that is more manageable with kind of recycling systems, getting rid of types of plastic that are especially hard to recycle or you can't recycle, being more transparent about what chemicals go into this stuff that, again, make recycling hard. But it really does come down to when you talk to, to not just activists, but also businesses increasingly, that, that regulation is going to play a big role. And so that, you know, there was a, a hearing in the Senate and the head of um, SC Johnson, a big consumer goods company, says something to the effect of, um, we need government regulation. Uh, businesses can't do this on their own. Um, and I think, you know, again, that gets back in large part to the economics of this. If companies don't have to deal with these costs, it's hard to imagine that they will, in sort of a sustained way, create systems to deal with this if they don't have to. Michael Copley, correspondent covering climate issues for NPR, thank you so much for breaking this down for us. Thanks, Allie.